Okay, I'm going to show you how the directory structure of actual fits together. Um, basically what they are, um, how it all fits together, backing it up and permissions. So, what the directories are. Let's start with profiles. Profiles give us a way of enabling and disabling stuff in a specific context. At the moment that pretty much means applications. So one application will have a certain set of packages enabled, another one will have different packages enabled. So let's go and get into the done it, um, the done it profile. So if we have a look here, um, we have some modules, macros, templates, and we have packages. If we have a look at each one of those, uh, macros has nothing, modules has... Oh, uh, oh no, okay, no, that's fine. Um, that's fine, I'll explain that in a sec. And templates is empty. Um, the reason why that took me by surprise is um, that is functionality that is going to disappear soon and that was me working around, that was a short time, short term workaround um, for that. So if we do a ls minus l on that um, you'll see that's actually pointing to the actual repository rather than the done it one. Um, so we can we can ignore that for now. So the only thing that is left that is still of relevance in the profiles directory is the packages thing because the packages can contain all of these other three things inside it um, there's only a very small number of situations where it's relevant to actually put these in here now uh, and that's where if you need something that needs to load up before the packages start getting processed that's when you would use these but the situations where you need that are so rare um, and I haven't needed to, it's basically language stuff uh, if you need to provide language foundations and that's, uh, uh, that's when you'd use it and I haven't needed to do it now for, uh, it must be at least a year that I've done it since I last did it. So um, if we get into packages, and you can see here there's quite a number of packages there uh, in this profile, and you can see there's only one from this actual uh, repository, all the rest are just actual packages. So let's go and have a look in the Dunnit repo. So we're in the uh, repo here, and we can see a couple of files, we can see packages available and we can see docs. So if we have a look at the readme, this is the readme that you get to see when you first go to the GitHub page for it. Let's have a look at parameters.json. This here gives um, a unique name and then it defines a profile which is done it and that profile has a name, it has a description, and then it uh, it has an exec name, so this is what we actually type to make it go. So if we go here, bing bing bing, and we type in done it, there it is right there. And then we go and define uh, what packages we want in that profile. That's all I'm going to say about that. This is called um, repo palms, and I'm going to do a video on that uh, very soon as well. Docs you'll see there's another readme here because this is a very simple readme there's a pretty um, uh, stuff off kind of uh, uh, readme in there um, that's only because this is a simple repo now if we come out of here and we get into packages available uh, we see we have one package and we have all these different macros um, we have a template in there um, notice there's no modules um, yeah, but most importantly, notice that we have docs, and in here, this is where, this is the primary place for the documentation, and so you can see here that uh, there's quite a bit of stuff in here. I'll provide more information about that uh, in the future, probably on the web page that corresponds to this episode. Now that I've mentioned the documentation, let's go and have a closer look at that. Notice in the actual home directory, there is a docs folder and this is where it gets more interesting so you can go and have a look at each uh, if you have a look in repos you'll see there is everything for that repository in there well actually let's do that right now um, so let's get into done it and you can see there there's packages and these are all the packages okay I need to fix that um, <laughs> So these are all the packages which are specific for this repo. But what is actually more useful to you, notice there is done it here. Um, now this is done it, the profile. So these are all profiles. 
except for this which is a container for all the different repositories. So let's get into Dunnit in here. And once again, you can see here that we have all of the documentation for all of the packages there. And you notice that we've got lots of actual ones. And then we've got a Dunnit one here. So if we hop into that Dunnit one, and there's the readme in there. So the idea is that you can come into this documentation folder and um, everything you need is in one place. Okay, so let's get into actual again. I've shown you so far, I've shown you the profiles, I've shown you the repos, I have shown you the docs. Okay, external libraries. Um, you can largely ignore that now. Um, it is, uh, it's where things like the fork AWS API um, used to go. Um, eventually, uh, I will update that to use the, uh, the latest AWS API. Um, anyway, uh, if you have a look, that's where it goes now. It just goes in the repos along with everything else. Um, so this external libraries will disappear in the not too distant future. Um, obsolete. Obsolete is whenever you do an install and stuff is no longer needed, it goes into this directory here. And the idea is that uh, if I've automated something and that stuffs up your uh, specific situation, um, you can go and find it in here. Um, yeah, that's the whole point of that. In order of importance, now let's go and have a look at um, config and data. Um, let's, okay, so let's have a look at config first. In here is a whole heap of JSON files. And you can see, uh, let's have a look at me. And so here, this is describing um, the computer that I'm running this on. And so it's just some JSON there. And if we go and have a look, if we go, actual minus get category equals me and you can see the correlation there uh, that's probably all I need to say about that um, let's get have a look at data okay same type of idea it's all running the same way um, notice this and this is me um, it's me messing around when I'm uh, testing um, basically I was testing a, fa a feature which I wasn't sure whether it was working or not and I was needing to restore the state quite often and so that was uh, uh, that was that okay credentials we shall leave alone for now uh, basically that's where credentials go it's not incredibly secure yet if you are putting credentials on a shared environment uh, the, t the sort of situation you'd do this is if you have a node which is connecting to the AWS API, um, it doesn't yet use roles, so um, you would need to actually stick the credentials on that machine for it to be able to connect. If you are doing that, you need to make sure that this directory is as secure as it needs to be, because that is just JSON files in that directory, which means that Anyone who has access to that directory can harvest those credentials. So do protect that, that is important. The AWS API is the only thing at the moment which uses that. Okay, core.php, that's just a whole heap of the core code. Um, you don't need to know anything about that. <coughs> Interfaces is pretty similar. Um, once again, uh, that you don't need to know a lot about these. These are just sort of basic uh, things which are used for getting the thing going. So this is uh, the command line one. Um, it is basically what we're using. All the demos which I'm showing you are using the command line. Um, you can actually also use this as a web API. Um, I did that as a proof of concept. I don't actually use it. so. Uh, if you use it, just be aware it hasn't been used in some time. Um, that's as of the beginning of 2014. I may start using that again in the not too distant future. 
supplementary. This might look a little bit familiar to you if you've uh, uh, been looking at the details. Um, it correlates with this. Notice that we have the same sets of commands showing up here and if I do the ls again, whoops, okay. So you can see here that uh, these correlate here. You don't need to execute anything in here ever, um, but if you're developing stuff, this is where it goes. I'm actually going to make this in the not too distant future so that repos can actually contain a supplementary folder um, and then everything that's in there will get put into here um, when that repo is installed. This was going to be one of my really quick videos. I think it is no longer quick, so it is time to now wrap this up. If there's any questions, put them in the comments below and um, I will answer anything I can.